Hello everyone, I'm back with another video tutorial for you. This time it is for the Felicity Tote Bag by Bagstock Designs. This tote features a front pocket that closes with a flap. Under the flap is a slip pocket and then a zipper pocket. And again, it closes with either a magnetic snap or you can use a twist lock. The instructions are given in the pattern for that. On the back, there is a trolley sleeve or a luggage sleeve. Also has a zipper pocket. There are the handles. My handles are made double-sided. These are not instructions given in the pattern, but I do show you how to make these in the video tutorial. In the instructions, it's just how to make your handles the regular way. The top closes with a zipper, keeping everything nice and safe inside. Inside, there is a slip pocket and a divider pocket, as well as another zipper pocket on the other side. So lots of pockets to help keep you organized and keep everything safe inside. The bottom of the bag is rectangular. There is options for adding purse feet. I didn't add them, but those instructions are given in the pattern for how to place your purse, your purse feet. There are also rivets used on the handles. If you don't have rivets, you can use Chicago screws. If you don't have Chicago screws, that's okay. You don't have to use them because the handles are stitched in place. These are more just for decorative purposes. We also use a zipper end on the end of the zipper. So we install this little metal zipper end. There's lots of new techniques that you may learn while making this pattern. And I'm going to walk you through all the steps of making this bag. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do after you pick all your fabrics that you want to use for making this bag, you're going to want to print your pattern using Adobe. So you'll print it at 100% or actual size. This way here it will ensure that all your pattern pieces will print correctly. However, there are one inch test squares on the pattern pieces. So you'll want to measure that one inch test square to make sure it is accurate. If it is not, you'll need to go back and reprint and change some of your printer settings so that the pieces do print correctly. They do need to print correctly in order for everything to fit when you go to construct the bag. So that is very important that that one inch square does measure an accurate one inch. So once you have all your pattern pieces printed, taped together, and you're ready to start cutting, you'll cut all your pattern pieces out in the materials that you have chosen. I've gone ahead and cut all mine and interfaced them already using the instructions Nimrata gives in the pattern. I also like to label where the top is and I like to mark my centers and I also mark what the pattern piece letter is as there are letters given for each pattern piece. You'll see that throughout the pattern. So I label all my pattern pieces with the corresponding letters. So you'll see here, I also did it here labeled it what the pattern piece letter is so that I know when I go to make the bag what pattern pieces I'm grabbing and if I'm grabbing the correct pattern pieces and also marking the top means that I will ensure that I'm putting them correctly in the correct position when I'm sewing them that way there I don't accidentally sew the side to the top instead of the top to the top. Another thing I've gone ahead and done is made some markings. All the marking um, measurements are given in the pattern. I don't give any in the video tutorials, so you'll just refer to that in the pattern. When we get to those steps, I'll refer to what page that is on and where you can find it so you know where we're at. So again, I've just gone ahead and I've done some of my markings. You can see here my zipper facing. I've gone ahead and done my marking on my piece D. I've gone ahead and did some markings. So once this is all done and you have everything all cut and all your markings made, you can go ahead and also cut your zippers. So I've done that for my zippers and I've also marked what zipper goes with what piece. So this is for my interior zipper. So I've marked them all so I know what zippers go where because there are a lot and some of them are sort of similar in length. So I don't want to get them confused. Now that we have them all cut and ready to go, we are ready to start sewing. So we're going to start with making our handles. My handles are going to be done a little bit differently. I'm going to make them double sided, but I will still show you or tell you how to make the handles as per the instructions in the pattern. So your handle piece will be two times the width of the one that I'm showing you here. If you're using a material that can't be ironed, you're going to want to draw a line down the entire length of the handle in the center. Then you will take your material and fold the long edges in to meet that center line. You can use some double sided tape here to help hold these in place. Once you get it pressed into that double or into the middle line, sorry, you're going to have it so it looks like this. Then you're going to fold it in half so all the raw edges are enclosed inside your handle. 
if you're using a material like cotton that you can press, you can fold it in half along the whole length of the handle and press it. Once you get it pressed, you're going to fold each long edge in to meet that center crease that you made. So you'll fold them both in and you'll press them in towards that center crease. Once you get that pressed the whole length of your strap, you're then going to fold it again, just like we did with the material that can't be ironed. And you're going to fold it again and you're going to get a piece where your raw edges are enclosed inside. So you'll just press that. After you have it all pressed for both uh, materials, you will take it to your machine and top stitch the length all the way down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides. To prevent twisting of a handle, start stitching at both at the top of both sides. So where you started, start on both sides of the strap on that side. That way there you're going the same way on both sides and that'll prevent it from twisting. Sometimes what happens when you start up here for this one side and then you start on this side for the opposite side it causes it to twist so to prevent that start stitching when you top stitch at the same edge for each side I hope that makes sense so for my handle because I'm making them double sided I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to press these into the center line that I created I'm just going to use some clips so I'm going to press each long edge into the center This is just something I like doing. This isn't something you have to do. You can go ahead and use the method that's given in the pattern. Great, so now that I have one side pinned, I'm going to go and sew this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down the whole length of the strap. I have that all stitched. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the other side. So again, taking that long edge and folding it in to meet the center mark I made. And it's okay if you don't have it perfectly touching. It's actually better not to have the material touching exactly in the center and you have a little bit of a gap. That way there you don't get that bulk and bulge here in the center when you fold your strap. That's for when you're doing them so that it's a four fold like that for the way given in the pattern. It's good if you don't make it match up completely because when you do, you end up getting a little bit of a bulk here in the seam. For this, it's okay that it matches up completely because I'm not folding it another time in to meet the center. And I'm going to repeat the process for stitching this again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. There we go that's how it will look once you have it stitched now I'm going to take my cotton strap and I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to press it so that the long edges meet in the center where I drew my center line so I'm going to go press that and I will be right back I'm actually going to press both now while I'm doing that now that I have my cotton strap all pressed the long edges all pressed towards the center I'm going to lay the cotton strap on top of my faux leather strap, lining up the short raw edges. going to pin it so that they are on top of each other the whole length of the strap making sure the edges are aligned all the way down the entire length of the strap and I'm going to pin it in place
You can also use double-sided tape here if you prefer. The choice is really yours. I'm just using pins. It's easier for me, especially because I don't have a lot of double-sided tape left, so I like to keep my tape for when I really need it. Once I have it all pinned and my edges are lined up, so the long edges are lined up, I'm going to sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And because I started stitching on this side, I'm going to start stitching on this edge as well and stitch all the way down so that my stitching goes in the same direction so I don't get the twisted strap. There we are. My strap is all done and top stitched. I have a piece here that's a little too long, so I'm just going to trim it off. When I stitch my other strap, I'm going to make sure they're finished the same length. So I'll just take this one and lay it against the other one and measure it and make sure it's the same length so that I don't have two different lengths of straps or handles, sorry. So that's how it'll look when you do a double-sided strap. If you were doing the strap as per pattern, it'll just be an eighth of an inch top stitch down each side and your strap will be the same on both sides. I will put some instructions up for the widths that I cut these to make the double sided straps just so that you have them if you want to make your straps this way. So again, that's how you make the double sided strap the way I do. I'm going to make my other strap now and then we will continue on. Again, I'm going to take my two straps and put them together to make sure that they're going to be the same length when I attach them to the bag. And I'm going to trim off the extra. They're both the same length. These can be put to the side. We're going to move on to the next step. For this next step, we need our front zipper pocket bottom, that's the D, and your choice of magnetic snap or a twist lock. I'm going to use a magnetic snap, so I need the female portion of the magnetic snap or the piece that has the innie, so it's the little innie. And I also use a piece of Peltex and some tape. So you're going to use the instructions. These are on page, uh, let me see, five for where to place your magnetic snap or your twist lock. I've already gone ahead and marked that. So I'm going to cut the slits for my prongs. Again, using the placement that is given in the pattern. I'm going to mark my piece of Peltex as well. This is just for extra stability behind the magnetic snap. And then you're going to push the prongs through the slits, put your piece of Peltex, or you can use Decaville Heavy as well. 
over and then your washer and then you're going to fold your prongs down. Then I'm going to put a piece of duct tape over my prongs. You can also use a piece of stabilizer, so shape flex or any woven interfacing over top of the prongs. Just be careful if you're using magnetic snap not to iron over the magnetic snap because you can demagnetize it. So just iron around the snap. And this just helps prevent the prongs from pushing through the other side during use over time. And our magnetic snap is installed. Another thing I forgot to mention is to apply some fray stop or fray check to the slits that you created. I forgot to do that, sorry. But you'll want to apply that to the um, slits so that they don't fray. It just helps protect them. Next, we need this front zipper piece. And we need our front zipper pocket zipper. Your front zipper pocket zipper and your D panel piece. You're going to place this so that the zipper pocket piece D is right side up on your table and your zipper is right side down. So the pretty side of your zipper pocket is facing up and the wrong side of your zipper is facing down. You're going to place the zipper so that it is the long edges meet with the long raw edge at the top of the zipper pocket. And your zipper pull should be closing to the left of the zipper pocket. If you don't like it going to the left, you can flip it and have it go to the right. It's really a personal preference. I'm going to flip mine to go to the right so that when I'm wearing my bag, I can open and close it towards the right. It closes towards me. So we will pin this to the top of the zipper pocket. So it's pinned just like that. And I'm going to sew this. There we go. It's all stitched in place. I'm going to go and stitch across the ends of the zipper just so that my zipper pull doesn't come off. So it creates a bar tack. Just like that so that way there when I'm zipping my zipper it doesn't come off my zipper tape so there you have it and again all the instructions for stitch length um, for seam allowances are given in the pattern so you'll want to refer to that for what the seam allowances are next we need our zipper pocket lining E piece this piece it'll look similar to this I've marked it with an E you're going to place the front zipper pocket lining E on top of your front zipper pocket bottom D that has the zipper already attached to it. So you're going to place it so that the pretty side is touching the wrong side of your zipper and line everything up. So the zipper is going to be sandwiched in between piece D and piece E. So just like that, it'll look like this. So you'll have your D, your zipper, and your lining and your zipper will be right sides together with your D and the wrong side will be touching the E. So we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we're going to press both panels so they are away from the zipper. So what I like to do is I just like to finger press this first. Try not to pull on your zipper because that can cause the zipper to be wavy. So just press it with my fingers first. And then I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press along the top seam. Again, be careful not to touch your magnetic snap with your iron because you can demagnetize it. So I'm going to go give this a press with my iron and I will be back. So now that we have this all pressed, we're going to go ahead and top stitch this. When you top stitch, don't forget to change your stitch length back to the stitch length you use for sewing. You don't want to be stitching your bag together and using your top stitch length. So always make sure you return to your regular stitch length. 
There we go, it's all top stitched. Next, we need to take the bottom edge of the front zipper pocket E, right sides together, and match up the edge of the zipper. So just like this. So you wanna make sure that everything stays nice and lined up as you're doing this. And you're gonna pin it to the top edge of the zipper that has nothing sewn to it. Just like that. Again, making sure you keep these side edges lined up nicely so that everything is nice and straight. And you'll pin it so the top edge, so again, I'm gonna show you again what I did. So this is the right side. This is what it looks like when it's flipped with your right side showing. You're going to flip it around so that the E is showing, the right side of the E is showing, and you're going to fold this up to meet the top edge of that zipper. Again, keeping everything lined up and pin it across the top edge of the zipper. So you're lining up the raw edge of E with the edge of the zipper that has nothing sewn to it. And that's how it'll look. We're going to sew this along the zipper. And another thing to note, your bottom folded edge should match up with the edge of your D, so it'll be the same length. So I'm going to sew this as per the instructions in the pattern. There you have it, it's all sewn together. If you unzip your zipper, you can see how the pocket is already starting to look, just like that. Now we need the zipper pocket top C piece. And it'll look like this, it's a smaller piece. You're going to place this so it is right sides to the wrong side of the top edge of the zipper. Making sure to line everything up. If you have center marks, use your center marks on your zipper and on your panels to line everything up so that you get everything nice and perfectly lined up. Now I'm going to sew this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. You'll notice when I approach my zipper, I always move the zipper head out of the way. That's just so I don't accidentally hit it with my needle or my foot. Okay, so that is stitched in place. Now we're going to flip this up and press the seam allowance towards this top piece that we just stitched on. So I'm giving that a finger press, then I'm going to take it to my machine, my, sorry, my iron, and I'm going to press this with my iron. So again, the seam allowance is pressed up towards this piece we just stitched on. So I'm going to take this to my iron and give it a press. Now I'm going to top stitch this seam along the zipper here that we just stitched. So this top piece here is where I'm going to top stitch. So now you're going to move the zipper so it's in towards the middle of the pocket and we're going to baste all these side edges together. So you're going to go down the side, over the zipper tape, all the way down the side, across the bottom and back up the other side. If you want, you can pin these together just to make sure that nothing shifts on you. So we're just gonna baste the sides all together. Now we're going to trim off any zipper overhang that we have. Just like that, so that it is nice and even with the sides. Now we need our piece F and our completed zipper pocket panel that we just made. We are going to pin piece F so it is pretty sides touching the pretty side of the D, so the front zipper pocket. So it'll be right side up. So the zipper and the magnetic snap are going to be facing you when you place this down. So right side with right side, pin along the top. Just like that. 
And then we're going to sew along that top seam using the seam allowance that is given in the pattern. Now we're going to flip the panels and I just like to press with my fingers again. So they are wrong sides together matching up all three raw edges, so the bottom edges and the sides. I also used my precision turning tool to help poke out that top edge and make it nice and crisp as well. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go press this with my iron just to give it a nice crisp top edge. And then we will top stitch this seam here along the top, along the folded edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you have that top edge top stitched, we're going to base the three remaining edges. And that's how it will look. You'll have your zipper pocket and you'll have the back and the front. Next we need our exterior middle B piece. So it'll look like this. And we're going to pin this front zipper pocket, the finished one we just made, to this B panel. And there are measurements given in the pattern for the placement of this, so you'll want to refer to the pattern for the placement of your zipper pocket. So I'm going to go and pin this all in place and I will be right back. So now that I have this all pinned and positioned where the in position is given in the pattern, so that is on page 8, so the measurements are given in the pattern on page 8. Once I have it all pinned, now I'm going to sew these three raw edges to my B panel. There we go. You now have a slip pocket and a zipper pocket attached to your exterior B panel. Now you're probably thinking there's raw edges here, don't worry, we're going to take care of those raw edges later on in the pattern. So we're going to put this aside for now and we need our flat pieces. So you need your two, two flat pieces. So the instructions in the pattern there for the magnetic snap for how to install your other half of your magnetic snap. If you're using a twist lock, you'll proceed with the sewing. So I'm doing a magnetic snap, so I'm going to attach my magnetic snap now. So I'm going to go and make those markings and I will be right back. All right, so I've made my marking for where to place my snap. I'm going to install it the same way I did for the exterior D panel. So using the manufacturer's instructions, I'm going to cut my slits. Because I'm using a faux leather for my flap exterior, I don't need to use a fray check or fray stop, but if you are using a cotton or something that can fray, you will want to use that fray check or fray stop on your slits. So I've cut my slits. I'm going to insert my magnetic snap. I'm going to insert my piece of Peltex, and I'm going to trim it down just so that it stays out of the seam allowance. Just to be careful that it doesn't get within my seam allowance. Then I'm going to place my washer over it and I'm going to fold my prongs down. And you'll notice I'm using a pair of pliers. This is just makes it easier for me to push these prongs down. I just bought these at the dollar store. You don't need anything fancy for this. And again, a piece of tape over top of the prongs. Just like that. So my magnetic snap is installed. Now we're going to move on with sewing our flap. Again, if you're installing a twist lock, you won't be doing this. You'll just be going right to the sewing, so the step we're at now. 
So we're going to line up all the edges of the flap and pin it. So you're pinning it so it is right sides together. And we're going to sew this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. You're only going to sew the curved edge, not the top straight edge. So just these edges here you're going to sew. You're going to leave that top edge unsewn. So, so starting and stopping and don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And now we need to trim this seam allowance down. I like to use pinking shears when I can, especially on curved edges. It helps it turn nicer. We're going to turn this right side out. I'm using my precision turning tool because I decided to use faux leather for both the exterior and lining of my flap. So I can't press this, but if you use cotton, you can go ahead and take this to the iron and give it a press. After you have it pressed, you're going to top stitch along the edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you'll top stitch all the way around and across the top edge as well. There we go, it's all top stitched all the way around. So you can see it's all top stitched. And I have my magnetic snap on the other side. If you are using a twist lock, the instructions for installing this is on page nine. So you'll wanna follow the instructions for installing your other half of your magnetic, uh, sorry, your uh, twist lock, that is on page nine. So we are done with the flap. Now we need to grab back our piece with the exterior uh, zipper pocket. I'm going to snap my magnetic snap closed, just like that, and we're going to pin this flat to the exterior along the top raw edge. And the reason why I snapped it closed is it just makes sure that that lines up when I sew it to my top edge here, and I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and straight. Nice and straight and even. And then I'm going to pin it. So it'll look like that. If you've used a twist lock, you'll see your twist lock on the top of your flap. So once it's pinned to the top edge, we're going to sew that in place with the seam allowance given in the pattern. There we go. It'll look like that once you get it stitched on to your exterior panel B that has the zipper pocket and the slip pocket. Magnetic snap closes. It's all done. Now we need our exterior top A piece, one of them. So it'll look like this. And again, I have it marked with an A and I have marked where my T is for the top. You're going to pin these together. So find the centers, pin the centers together and then pin your sides and then pin in between. So it'll look like that. So the right side of the exterior top A piece will be right sides together with your exterior middle B piece with your pocket and your flap. So you'll pin them so that they're pretty sides touching and then we're going to sew along this top edge here where we've pinned so they are pinned raw edges aligned. We're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once that's sewn you're going to flip this so the top A piece is pressed up. So the seam allowance here will be pressed up towards this top A piece. If you have material at the top here that can be pressed with an iron, go ahead and give this press with an iron. Just be careful because if your flap is made with material that can't be pressed, 
you won't be able to press all the way across so I would just press up to as close as you can get to the flap on both sides and then just finger press this. I'm using a vinyl so I can't press it with my iron so I'm just giving it a finger press. And then we're going to top stitch this seam right along here on the top of the exterior A piece. So I'm just top stitching along that whole edge. There you go. It's all top stitched. You can see I top stitched it all the way across. So that is top stitched. Now we are going to move on and make our trolley sleeve, or as some may call it, a luggage sleeve. So you'll need the trolley sleeve piece G. And the zipper for your trolley sleeve. So I've marked this that says trolley, so I know what the zipper is that goes for the trolley sleeve. So we're going to place this zipper on top of our exterior piece, trolley sleeve piece. So your trolley sleeve exterior will be right side up and again the zipper will be right sides against the trolley sleeve. So there's also a note in the pattern about having your zipper attached before we go on that you want there to be extra zipper on the right side of the panel otherwise it will be difficult to top stitch later. So you want to make sure that you have extra zipper tape on the right side of the panel. So don't center your zipper. So it'll look like this. So you'll have the excess zipper on the right side hanging off. So now I'm going to use a zipper foot and I'm going to baste this zipper to the trolley sleeve exterior. Next we're going to take our trolley sleeve lining and we're going to place it so it is right sides against the wrong side of the zipper matching up those raw edges. You also want to make sure that everything matches up with the exterior as well so all the edges match up, so the side edges match up. And you're going to pin it together. So you can see your sandwich is, your zipper is sandwiched in between the exterior and lining pieces. We're going to stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we're going to press both panels away from the zipper. So again, same thing as I did before, I'm just going to give this a press with my fingers. And then I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press this with my iron. Because there's no zipper stops on each end, just be careful when you're moving your zipper around that you don't accidentally unzip it all the way off. But if you do, just put your zipper back on, it's okay. So now we're going to top stitch this at the top edge here, away from the zipper with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Okay, so now that that is top stitched, we're going to take the exterior trolley sleeve and pin it so the remaining edge, so this, this edge that isn't pinned or stitched to anything, comes up and meets the edge that has nothing stitched to it on the zipper comes up and meets that edge and you're going to pin it in place. Make sure your side edges stay all lined up. Then we will stitch this in place with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Next, we're going to fold the trolley sleeve lining up in the same manner that we did for the exterior. So when they're pinned and sewn, it'll look like this. So we're going to line it up with that edge where we just sewed the exterior to the zipper. So the lining is pretty sides touching the wrong side of the zipper. And we will stitch this in place with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now we 
need to turn the trolley sleeve right sides out through one of the openings. I'm going to stitch my zipper just to make sure it stays closed here. So I'm going to create bar tacks on each end. I just don't want it coming unzipped so I just created a bar tack by stitching right here on the edge of my zipper going across right here. So now I'm going to turn it right sides out through one of the side openings. And you're going to want to press this seam that we just stitched, press it really well, so take it to your iron and give it a really good press, and then we'll top stitch that seam just as we did with the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this. Now, if you created the little bar tack here at the end, you can snip that off if you want. I just like it. It just helps keep everything together. But you can stitch, you can slip, snip that off or leave it come undone or open the zipper. Really a preference. So now you'll close the zipper and place the trolley sleeves so it is on a flat surface. And your zipper should close to the left. And then there's instructions in the pattern for how you're going to fold this. So how much of a space is between the zipper and the top edge of your trolley sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that and get that all done. And then I will be right back to show you what we do next. So now that I have that measurement and I have it all pressed and pinned, we're going to go ahead and top stitch along the folded edge and the bottom edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you're going to top stitch this top edge and this bottom edge. Once you've top stitched the top edge and the bottom edge, you can baste the sides together. Now we're going to trim away the excess zipper. You'll do this on both sides. And it'll look like this. Now we need to take our finished trolley sleeve and our remaining exterior middle B and we will use the measurements given in the pattern for where we are going to place this. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my measurements and get this pinned in place and then I will be back to show you how we sew the trolley sleeve to the exterior middle. Now we, that we have it pinned, so I've got mine pinned to my exterior middle. We're going to sew the sides using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And there we go, we just sewed the sides so it'll look like this, you'll have a hole here, but you'll also have a little zipper pocket as well. Next we're going to take the exterior top A piece, the remaining one, and pin it the same way we did to the other exterior middle, right sides together, lining up the center marks and the sides. And we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. We will press this seam up towards the exterior top. So a piece. If you're using cotton, you can go ahead and press it with your iron. And then we will top stitch this along the exterior top piece. There we go, we have it all top stitched. Now we need our 
panel with the pocket with the flap and our handles, as well as the panel with the trolley sleeve. So I'm going to put one of my handles aside for now and one of the panels aside and work on this one. So what we will do is you can pin or use double-sided tape to help hold your handles down. You're going to pin your handles to one of the exterior panels. It tells you in the pattern what measurements you need to use, so you'll want to go ahead and use those measurements. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to pin my handle to my panel. Once we have our handles pinned to our middle panel, we're going to sew them. When you're pinning your handle, make sure that it's not twisted. So we'll sew this using the measurements given in the pattern and she also tells you where to start and stop sewing so you'll want to pay attention to that. That is all on page 14 of the pattern, how, to, how far up to sew and the seam allowance. So go ahead and use that measurement she gives in the pattern to sew your handle on. And there is one panel with the handle attached. So you'll repeat that process for the second panel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And there we go, our handles are attached to both our middle panels. Next we need to attach the foam to these middle panels. So I'm going to grab my foam pieces and we're going to place them so they are against the foam. And then you'll baste this panel to the foam. When you're basting this panel to your foam, keep your handle out of the way. You don't want to stitch over the handles. You just want to stitch the middle panel to the foam and that's it. So pin all the way around the sides and the bottom and the top. Do this for both the panels. And then you'll stitch all the way around. You'll do this for both panels. This stitching doesn't need to be pretty, this basting stitching, because you're not going to see it once the bag is completed. So now that it is basted to both panels, your foam is attached. Sometimes what I like to do is use a basting spray first, spray it, and then attach my panel, and then I'll do a basting stitch all the way around. I didn't do that today, just so that I can show you how the instructions are in the pattern. So now we're going to add some rivets to our handles. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. She's got measurements in the pattern for where to place it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those measurements and then I'll show you how I install my rivets. So I have my marks all made for where I'm going to place my rivets. If you don't have a tabletop press or a handheld press, you can go ahead and use Chicago screws. For Chicago screws, all you need to do is use an awl to make your holes for where you want to put the Chicago screw. And then you just need a screwdriver to screw them together. It works the same. These are just for decorative purposes. So they're not actually holding anything for any strength. So you can use Chicago screws in place of a rivet. I'm going to punch my holes at the marks I made. If you use the cotton for your strap, you'll want to apply some fray check or fray stop here on the holes you made.
And there we go. Your rivets or Chicago screws, whatever you chose to install, are there. You can also omit that. You don't have to install them if you don't have them. So they're both done. If you have a name tag or a handmade label you'd like to install, go ahead and install that at this time. You can install it here. Sometimes can it, people like to install it at the bottom of the bag in the corner here or in the bottom here. I wouldn't recommend this one because there is a pocket you'll be going through so you can install it on either side. I'm not installing one so I'm going to leave that for now. Next we're going to attach our exterior bottom. to our two exterior panels. So grab your bottom piece, it'll be P that you've marked, and you're going to put them right sides together, matching up the bottom edges, and pin it all the way across. You're going to sew this with the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. Once you have that completed, you're going to press the seam towards the bottom panel and then you're going to top stitch along the bottom panel using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. I can't press this again because I'm using vinyl so I'm just going to press it nice and flat with my hands and then I'm going to top stitch it. Now that that's top stitch, we will repeat the same process for the other side. So again, right sides together, you're matching up the bottom edges. So the bottom of your panel, exterior panel, with the bottom edge of your bottom panel. And then again, sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Press the seam towards the bottom panel and top stitch again. Both pieces are attached and top stitched. If you want, in the pattern she says you can top stitch a second line. Again, the instructions and the measurements for that are on page 16. So you can do the second line of stitching if you prefer. So now we're going to mark our centers of this exterior bottom G piece. So just fold it in half and mark your centers. So it's just on these short edges where these little cutouts are, that's where you're marking the center. And I've used pencil just because it's on the wrong side and in the end you're not going to see this. So it's okay that I'm using pencil. Now to finish our exterior, we're going to take these and place them so they are right sides together. So you're going to be seeing the foam, that's what will be facing out. And you're going to fold the exterior in half matching up the top panel. You also want to be careful and match up that seam allowance here where you did the top exterior pieces. So these seam allowances, you want to match those two up together so that they line up when the bag is completed. So place a pin there or a clip just so they stay lined up. And then pin it all the way down. And again, do that with the bottom panel. You'll line up that seam allowance where the bottom panel is. And place a pin or a clip. and then clip along the whole side. You'll do this for both sides of the panels. Again, lining up the top exterior A where the seam is and lining up your bottom panel. You're going to sew along both sides with the seam allowance given in the pattern so I'm going to do that now. If you've changed your stitch length to top stitch, go ahead and change it back to your length you use when you stitch. Don't forget to back stitch at start and stop.
You'll want to press the seams open. I can't use my iron, so I'm just going to do this with my hands, just because I use vinyl at points of the bag. So I'm just going to press it open with my hands as best I can. And then you're going to trim this seam allowance down. And that's how it'll look once you've gotten it all stitched on the sides. Next we're going to pinch the side seam and the bottom so that the side seam and the mark you made on the bottom middle, so this middle mark and your side seam both line up and you're going to pin, pin it there. Another thing I like to do to make sure I don't get wrinkly corners is run my hand along the edge so that I don't get wrinkles in my corners and then I place a pin further down the edge. This just helps make sure that I don't get any puckers or wrinkles or anything in my corner. So I'll do the same thing to the other side and then paste, place a clip and repeat that for the other side. So you can see I've put some extra pins down on the corner here. That just helps hold the fabric so that it doesn't pucker on me. So line up your side seam with that middle seam on your bottom, place a clip, and then run your hand inside the bag along this side edge here, place a clip, and repeat for the other side. You're going to sew this pinned edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you're done that, you'll trim the seam allowance again. And just to note, I like to stitch over my seam that I made here at the bottom a second time just for some extra reinforcement. Not necessary, but I just like it for that extra security and reinforcement of my stitching. Now you're going to turn the exterior right side out. This is where we get to see how the bag will look on the outside. And there is our exterior so far. Our flap with our slip pocket and our zipper pocket. And then on the back we have our trolley sleeve and another zipper pocket which should fit your phone let's see i guess i have a big phone it doesn't fit but it'll fit in this pocket here nice perfect fit we're going to put this aside for now and move on Okay, so for the next step we need our interior zipper pocket facing L. You would have marked it with an L. It is a piece that looks like this. On page 18 there are some instructions for how to mark the zipper pocket facing so you'll want to refer to that for the measurements of where to make the markings. It'll look like this when you're done. So now that I have mine done I'm going to go ahead and move on. So next we need our interior zipper pockets and our interior zipper pocket zipper. So these are pieces M that you're using. You're going to lay it so it is right side up on your table and then you're going to lay your zipper so it is right side up as well. So the wrong side of the zipper will be touching the pretty side of your interior zipper pocket. You're going to pin this all the way across the top so you're lining up the raw edge with the top edge of the zipper. And then you will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern, and that is on page 19. Next, you'll repeat that for the remaining interior zipper pocket. Line up your zipper, so wrong side against the pretty side of the fabric, to the top edge of your interior zipper pocket. Once you have it pinned, again, you'll sew all the way across using the seam allowance given in the pattern.
Once you have this stitched, you're going to press it so that the panels are away from the zipper. So go ahead and take this to your iron and give it a press. And this is how it'll look once you have it pressed. It does look wrong because the nice side of the zipper, the pretty side of the zipper, is on the same side as the wrong side of your fabrics. But once you make the pocket, when you reach in, you'll see that you reach in and you see the pretty side of the fabric. So it looks wrong, but it'll be right once we sew the zipper pocket into the bag. So we're going to put this off to the side. And we're going to grab one of our lining bottom K and grab back your interior zipper pocket facing as well. In the pattern on page 19, there are instructions for where you're going to place this zipper pocket facing on your lining bottom. So you'll want to refer to that. That's on page 19. For the placement of this so I'm going to go ahead and place mine now and pin it in place. You want to make sure it's centered on your panel as well as at the mark that is given in the instructions. What you will do is sew along the outer box that you drew not that center line with the little V's on the end just the outer box of the zipper facing. So this outer box here, you're going to sew the outer box. You're going to sew all the way around pivoting at each corner. Don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And you can also use a little bit of a shorter stitch length for this. Okay, so now that I have the box stitched, just the outer box, I'm going to use my seam ripper and go along this center line I drew and cut down, just start a hole down that center mark. And then I will take my scissors and I will cut all the way till I get to the tip of the V. And then I will cut the V in towards the corner, careful not to clip my stitches. If you accidentally clip your stitches, what you can do is just go back and re-stitch that corner where you accidentally clipped your stitches. It's okay, I've done it before where I've accidentally clipped my stitches and I just go back and start at the top or at the bottom, stitch around, back stitch, just to reinforce that corner again. But you want to cut into the corner as much as you can without cutting those stitches so that this turns out really sharp and nice for you. There we go. Now we're going to take this and we're going to push it through the opening. What I like to do again is run my nail along it. You can just finger press it and then push it through. And then we're going to press this with our iron. So I'm gonna push it through and then I'm gonna take this to my iron and I'm going to press this onto the wrong side so they are wrong sides touching. So I'll be right back. You can use double-sided tape here to help hold this down. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape to help hold mine down. Another thing I do if I'm low on double-sided tape is I put some masking tape or packing tape or painter's tape across it, just like that. And that holds it while I sew, and then I just remove the tape after I sew my zipper on. My tape has lost its stickiness and even with my trick it's not sticky enough. So I'm going to use the tape trick. It's sticky but not quite enough to hold it down long enough. And if you forget to remove this, don't panic. Nobody's going to see this because it's going to be in the lining of the bag. This is just to help hold my facing down or the facing down while you sew your zipper pocket on. So that is how it'll look just like that and then you have them so that the wrong sides are touching together. Now that we have our zipper facing 
attached to our lining bottom, we need to take our zipper pocket and place the opening over top of the zipper. Make sure the zipper is centered. You also want to line up the side edges of your zipper facing with the side edges of the zipper pocket. So line everything up. You can use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place here. I'm going to use some painter's tape. And then I'll use some pins on the side. Once you have it all pinned in place, you'll take this to the machine and sew around the opening of the zipper all the way around the side, the, the edges to help hold the zipper in place. Again, you can use double-sided tape or fabric glue here if you want instead of as I did with masking tape or you can also use pins. Whatever method you prefer to help hold this in place, go ahead and do that. So again, we're going to stitch around the whole opening of the zipper pocket. One more thing before we start, I like to add pins to the bottom here to help hold the zipper pocket from accidentally bulking up, bulging up underneath the zipper when I'm sewing, so this way here it doesn't get in the way. And there you have it. The zipper is stitched in place. Now we need to flip the zipper pocket over. And we're going to align the sides, pin it so that everything is lined up. And using the top piece of the zipper pocket, we're going to trim this excess off the pocket that's on the bottom. So you want these to be the same length and even. Just like that. And then we will take these two pocket pieces and we will turn them or press them up the amount that is given in the pattern and that's on page 21. So I'm going to go ahead and press these panels up the seam allowance that is given in the pattern. Once you have that bottom edge pressed on both of the pocket panels, you'll go ahead and pin the sides again, if you unpinned them. Leave this folded up, you'll pin it so that it stays folded up. And we're going to sew the sides of the zipper pocket, just the sides, not the bottom. The bottom is going to be used for turning the bag right sides out through later. So we'll sew just the sides. I'm going to remove this tape now while I can. So when you're sewing the sides of the pocket, move your lining bottom out of the way. You don't want to sew through the lining bottom and sew the sides of the pocket with the seam allowance given in the pattern. There you go. Your bottom is turned on both sides. You've turned the edges up and you have your pocket side sewn. So your pocket right now will have a hole in the bottom. You can set this lining panel off to the side for now. Next we're going to make our interior slip pocket. So you need the interior slip pocket piece N. In the pattern there are measurements given for where you need to mark the top and the bottom of the interior slip pocket. So you'll want to make those measurements and then you'll also want to press the top and bottom at those measurements. So you'll press them like this. So go ahead and make those marks and press your panel. Once you have those pressed it'll look like this. So you'll have pressed it to the words the wrong side at the marks that were given in the pattern. You're going to flip this so that it is right sides up and then you're going to Take the pressed edges and match them up, match up your sides as well, and pin all the way along the sides of the slip pocket. You'll do this on both sides. 
Once you have those pinned, you will sew just the sides using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And right now I am on page 21 for making the interior slip pocket. So again, use the seam allowance given in the pattern to sew the sides. You're not sewing the edge that's folded, you're just sewing the sides. Now we're going to turn the slip pocket right sides out. If you have a turning tool or a chopstick or anything you use, go ahead and push the corners out carefully. Then you're going to take this and press it really well. So I'm going to go do that. Once we have it pressed, I'm going to clip this edge that's open, so the edge that we pressed before. I'm just going to put some clips to help hold it in place. Then we're going to top stitch both the bottom and top edge. So I'm going to top stitch both the bottom and top edge. So you want to use an erasable marking pen to mark your folded edge as the top. So go ahead and mark a T so you know where the top is. So make sure it's something that you can wipe off or erase. Now we're going to fold the slip pocket in half, creating a crease. And then you're going to use the measurements given in the pattern for making some marks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will be back. Once you've made those marks, you're going to go ahead and fold the slip pocket at these marks and press it. And then you want to edge stitch on this pleat right here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you have that side done, you'll repeat this for the second side. So again, fold it at that line you made and you're going to, again, edge stitch, press and then edge stitch it. This is how it will look once you have it all stitched. So it has little pleats. Now we need the remaining lining bottom. So the lining bottom with nothing attached. And you're going to pin this to the lining bottom using the measurements given in the pattern and these measurements are on page 22 so you'll want to refer to page 22 and I'm on step 10 so you'll want to refer to that for the placement of this slip pocket so I'm going to go ahead and pin mine in place using the measurements and I will be back. Don't forget to make sure your pocket is centered as well so you'll want to line up your center, see your center seam on your slip pocket with the center seam on your lining bottom. So I will pin mine in place and then I will be right back to show you how we are going to sew this. Now that we have our pocket all pinned, we're going to sew up the center and then we're going to stop and form a V at the top here. On page 22 she gives the measurement for how to make the V, so you'll want to refer to that. That's on page 22, step 11. So I'm going to sew up the center and then I'm going to create that little V. The V just helps the pocket from sagging or hanging down in the center once the pocket is made and filled. There we go. I have a little V right here and I've sewn up the center. Next, you're going to remove all the pins that you use to hold your pocket in place. And you're going to fold these pleats so they meet the center line. And then you want to pin it in place. And you'll repeat that for the other side. So make the second pleat match up with the first pleat right in the center. And it'll look like that. Your pleats will meet in the center here. And now we're going to sew down the sides, across the bottom, and back up this other side. If your machine struggles with bulk, because it is a little bit bulky right here at the bottom, switch to a 116 needle or even bigger, and that'll help you get through the bulk, and also lengthen your stitch length a little bit. Make sure you uh, backstitch at start and stop as well. Remove all the pins that are left.
and there is your completed slit pocket. It has the little pleat in the center and your two pockets. Now we're going to put this one off to the side. Next we need our divider zipper. So if your zipper is not trimmed to the length she gives in the pattern, and this is on page 23, you'll want to go ahead and trim that now. You'll also want to get your divider zipper pocket oops, tabs. So there's two of them. They look like this. You're going to mark a line down the center of these. I'm just going to fold them in half and press them. Then you're going to take the raw edges and fold them in to meet that crease on both sides. And then fold in half again. So same thing we did with the handles. So your raw edges are all hidden and you'll have a piece that looks like this. The measurements are given in the pattern for what the finished size of these zipper tabs will be. So again, mark a line or as I did, I just folded it directly down the center. Then fold the long edges in to meet the center crease that you made on both sides. and fold it in half again. You can do this with your iron, press it with your iron. I'm just pressing with my fingers because it gives it a good enough press for me. Next, you'll take your zipper and you'll put it into the folded zipper tab all the way in, pin it in place. Do this on both sides. So it'll look like this. And then we're going to stitch this tab down to the zipper with the seam allowance given in the pattern. You'll do this on both sides of the zipper for both tabs. Once you have those stitched, you will then trim the tabs so they are even with the zipper tape. And your finished zipper will look like this with the two zipper tabs on the end. Next we need our divider pockets, our interior divider pockets. So these are I. So there's all four of them. I just need one right now. So I'm placing one face up on my table. And then I'm going to take the zipper and I'm going to find my center for it. So I'm just going to fold it in half and mark the center. Then I'm going to take the center of my zipper and line it up with the center mark on my divider pocket, pin it in place along the top edge, and then I'm going to base this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now you're going to take another divider pocket and lay it so it is right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper. So the pretty side of your divider pocket will be touching the wrong side of the zipper. The zipper will be sandwiched in between the first piece you sewed to the zipper and then the next one you're pinning. So as you can see here, the zipper is in between, sandwiched in between. Now you're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Once you have that stitched, you'll press both panels away from each other so they are wrong sides touching. And then you will top stitch this seam beside the zipper with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm going to go press my panels now. Minus press, and as I said previously, I'm going to top stitch this seam. Now we're going to repeat that whole process to attach the remaining two interior divider pockets. So again, lining up the center seam on my zipper with the center seam on the divider pocket. So 
right side of the zipper is against the right side of the divider pocket. And we'll stitch along the top of the zipper. Pin the remaining divider pocket to the wrong side, lining up the center, so to the wrong side of the zipper. So the pretty side is touching the wrong side of the zipper. And sew this. You will press these panels so they are wrong sides touching and then top stitch. There we go, that's how it'll look. Now you're going to pin the interior divider exterior panels together so they are right sides together matching up the bottom edges and side edges. And you'll repeat this for what is the lining of your divider pocket as well. And now we will sew only the bottom edges together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Next we'll press these seams open both sides of where we just sewed. Now we're going to turn the pocket right sides out through one of the side openings. We want to line up those bottom seams and pin along the sides. I also like to make sure that my top is lined up as well. The top seam up here by the zipper is lined up. Now we're going to baste the sides together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. There we go. Our divider zipper pocket is completed for now. You can put this off to the side. Next we need our main closure zipper. So there are instructions for if you're using a zipper with stops or a continuous zipper. So I am using a continuous zipper tape, so I'm going to follow the instructions given for this. So she has you make some marks. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once you've made the mark where she instructs in the pattern, go ahead and if your zipper tape is closed like mine was, go ahead and pull it open a little bit. You're going to pinch the zipper tape at that line that you made and then fold it at a 90 degree angle as shown in the pictures on page... 26. So I'm going to get close to the camera and I'm going to show you what I did. So here's the line I made. I'm pinching it at that line and then I'm taking the zipper tape and I'm folding it so that it, that folded line that I pinched is against my zipper teeth. Just like that. I have a video tutorial on my YouTube channel. I will link it below for how this is done. A little bit more instruction for how to do this. And then I place a pin. So again, pinch it at the line that you drew, just like that. And then you're going to take that fold and bring it at a 90 degree angle up so it is against the zipper teeth. So it is right here. That folded edge that I pinched is right there against the zipper teeth, just underneath them. Pin it in place. Again, I will link that video that I have in the description below so you can refer to it if you need the extra help. Now we're going to stitch the zipper tape just here along this edge here, just right there, just to help hold this in place. When you're stitching, just be careful if you have pins not to hit the pins. So just remove them as you get close to them or hand crank over them. And there you go. You will have a zipper tape that looks like this. Next, you can close this zipper end using a zigzag stitch or just straight stitch back and forth over it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just like that. And 
and we'll put this zipper tape off to the side for now. Next we need our zipper panels. So that is H. There will be four. There will be two exteriors and two interior or two lining. There are some markings that you need to make on these zipper panels. You want to refer to that on page 26, step 5. So you'll want to refer to that to make those markings. I've already made mine. So again, that is page 26, step 5. Once you have those markings made, you will press them to the wrong side at those markings. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I'm just creasing it with my finger, using my nail. Now you'll want to take one of your main zipper closures and have it right side up on your table. And you're going to take your zipper and lay it along the top edge of your zipper panel. You're going to place it, she gives a marking, away from the edge of the zipper, uh, the uh, main closure. So you want to make note of that. That is on page 27, step 6. So that's how far you're going to place the zipper over from the edge of the main zipper closure. You want to pin this in place all the way across. The folded edge will be the edge that's on the same size side as the zipper tail here, so the loose end of the zipper, not the side that we folded the zipper tape at a 90 degree angle. The opposite end is where that folded edge is. So that's where it is, so the folded edge, you'll see my zipper tail sticking off here, and I have placed my zipper at the measurement she gives for where to start the zipper tape right here. So I'm going to sew the zipper in place using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. And you can sew right up to where the fold is. I like to go not right to the edge, about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. Also it might be easier if you stitch this with your zipper unzipped. So I'm going to zip the zipper back up and then I'm going to take my lining zipper closure and I'm going to place it right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper and I'm going to pin this in place all along that top edge. I'm actually going to unzip my zipper because it will be easier to have the zipper out of the way and not have to wrangle it out of the way while I'm sewing. So there we go, it's all pinned. So next you're going to do this a little bit different. You're going to sew up the short edge, then you're going to stop, pivot, and sew across the zipper again using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So again, I'll repeat that. You're sewing up this short edge, stopping, and then pivoting and sewing across this top edge of the zipper and zipper main zipper closure. You want to make sure that these here, where your folded edges are, that they line up. So you may have to make some adjustments as you go with the folded edge and that's okay. You just want to make sure it's all lined up. So again, start sewing here on the short edge up, come across the top where the zipper tape is. Sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And that's how it will look. So I sewed up this side edge here and then across the whole zipper tape. Next you're going to trim these corners, trim that seam allowance, just like that. I didn't trim my zipper tape, you don't need to, but if you feel that it's getting in the way, go ahead and trim it. You want to use some kind of turning tool to help poke out that corner. And then take this to your iron and give it a press. Next, 
you're going to top stitch these edges. So stitch, top stitch up this side, across the whole length of the zipper, down here, and then you're going to stitch this raw edge closed. I'm going to wait and do my top stitching after I attach the other side of the main zipper closure. So I'm going to repeat all those same steps that we did when we attached this side. So again, using the marking she gives in the pattern, line up your zipper with that mark. That's where you're going to start the zipper. And you're going to sew all the way across the zipper. Repeat to attach the lining. So line up the edges. And again, I'm going to unzip my zipper. I'm going to line up the raw edges on the one side and then the folded edges on the other side. Again, the folded edge is where my zipper tail is. And then I'm going to sew this short edge and then sew acro across the whole length of the zipper. Trim the seam allowance down, so trim this corner on an angle. You don't need to trim your zipper and then turn it right sides out. So it's going to look like that when you trim it. So this is trimmed on an angle and then down. Turn it right sides out. And then take this to your iron and press it again. Now I didn't top stitch my first panel, so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch them both now. You're stitching all the way around all four sides. And there is your completed main zipper closure. Just like that, all top stitched and done. Now we need to grab back one of our lining bottoms. You'll want the one with the zipper pocket. You'll place the lining bottom right side up. You need to find the center of your main zipper closure. So I'm going to fold mine in half and then mark the center just within the seam allowance. So your zipper pulls when you're putting this on should be on the same side. Because I want my zipper pocket at the back of the bag and I want my zipper to open so that it closes when it's in the front when I'm wearing it because I wear my bags on the right side, my zipper pocket is going to be closing a different way than my main zipper closure and I'm okay with that. So we're going to line up the center, so the center on the lining bottom with the center on the main zipper closure. So the main zipper closure will be lining side touching the right side of your main zipper closure. So the exterior will be facing up. The, that's the exterior of the main zipper closure. You're going to pin this all the way across. So again, my zipper pocket zipper is closing one way and my main closure is closing a different way. That's just a personal preference. Go ahead and place it however you want to place it. We're going to stitch this in place. Then you're going to take your lining top, which is piece J, and you're going to line it up with the top edge of the main zipper closure and your lining bottom. So you're going to place the right sides together with the right side of the main zipper closure. So this is your exterior fabric. So the linings are touching and the exterior here will be touching the lining top. One way to check to make sure that you're installing your main zipper closure correctly is to hold your bag as if you're going to be complete as if the bag is going to be completed and hold the zipper and when you unzip it 
you should be able to see inside and see the lining. If you're unzipping it and you're finding that your zipper is on this side, you're going to be sewing it wrong. So the zipper, the zipper head should be facing up, not inside the bag. Now we're going to sew the main, or sorry, the lining bottom with the lining top. We're going to press the lining top right side up. Make sure the seam allowance is pressed towards the lining bottom. So you want to press it like this so that everything is pressed down towards the bottom. Again, your zipper closure will be touching the lining top. So go ahead and give this a press and then we're going to top stitch that. So we're going to top stitch the entire length here of this folded edge we just pressed, so under the main zipper closure. When you're top stitching this, make sure your zipper pocket is down, it's not bunched up or bulked up underneath here. You can also place some pins to help hold it down. Now that that is top stitched, we're going to repeat all these steps that we just did to attach this main zipper closure to this piece to the other lining bottom and lining top. So again, lining up our center marks. So lining side of the main zipper closure touching the right side of the lining bottom. Pin it in place and sew using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Attach your lining top, that's piece J. So line up the center, so the lining top will be right sides together with your main zipper closure. So the zipper closure is sandwiched between the lining bottom and the lining top. And you will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, repeat the same process to press this and top stitch this edge. Okay, so now that we have that all top stitched, your zipper closure is there. Again, you can check and make sure you did it right. Your zipper will be facing up, so this would be against the exterior. This would be as if this was your exterior, and you'll know you have it right because your zipper pull is on the top. Next, we are going to attach our divider zipper pocket. So you want to place this lining panel so that your zipper pocket is right side up. She has some marks that she gives for measurements for where to place this divider pocket. You'll want to refer to that on page 29, step one, for where you're placing it up from this corner here, these corners, the cutouts. So we'll place it at that mark. I've gone ahead and I had already made my mark. So we'll place it at that mark, pin it in place, and you'll pin it all the way up the sides. Another thing is you want to make sure your divider zipper pocket closes the same way as your um, interior zipper pocket. Again, my zipper pocket is closing a different way from my exterior zipper. So I'm just going to make my divider zipper pocket close the same way as my exterior zipper. Pin it all the way up the side. And then you're going to baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So again, we're just going to sew where the divider is, and I've placed it up the, the um, measurement that she gives. So I've used the measurement, made a mark, and I've placed the bottom of my divider zipper pocket at that measurement, and I'm going to sew all the way up the side of the divider pocket. You're going to repeat this for the other side. This will pull your divider pocket. As you'll notice, it's pulling over here. So this will pull the divider pocket over because the divider pocket is smaller than your lining bottom. So just have it pull it over and then again pin the sides in place and sew up the sides. So it'll look like that with this part pulled over and then pinned at the side. And see you can see it's pulling it, it's made it sort of creased in the middle, that's okay. That's not wrong. And your divider zipper pocket is attached. Next, we're going to finish the lining. So we're going to take the 
lining bottom with the slip pocket and place it over the side with the divider pocket attached. Line up the divide the divide uh, the uh, lining bottom seam where the lining top meet each other. You want to line up that seam, pin it in place, and then pin all the way down the side. Then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern, and that is on page 30. You want to pay attention to how she says to sew this because it is sewn a little bit different. So you want to pay, want to pay attention to that. That is on page 30, step 2. So we'll sew the side. Be careful not to get your zipper caught in there. Then you'll repeat that for the other side. So pull the lining bottom so it's flat. Tuck your zipper tail in. Line up the lining bottom where it meets the lining top. Line up that seam. Pin it in place. And then you'll pin all the way down the side. There you go. So I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. When you get up near the top where your zipper tail is, just make sure it's out of the way so you don't sew over it. I'm going to trim my seam allowance and then press my seams open. So I'm going to take this to my iron and press the seam open. Now we're going to pin our bottom edges and we're going to sew this as well with the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm also going to trim this seam allowance. This just helps reduce the bulk in the seams and I'm going to press this seam open. Now we're going to box these corners the same way that we did with the exterior. So you're going to line up the side seam with the bottom seam. So the exterior had a mark on the bottom. This one has a seam. So you're lining up those two seams. Clip it in place. And you're going to sew these with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure to backstitch at start and stop. I'm going to also trim this seam allowance and this is how your lining will look. So you have my zipper, your zipper pocket here, then you have your divider in the middle and then your slip pocket on the other side. Now we are on the final assembly. We are almost done. So you want to open the main zipper closure completely. So this piece here, you want to open this completely and unzip the interior zipper pocket completely. Your exterior was turned right side out, so you're going to place that inside the bag so that it is on the side where the zipper pocket is. So right here, you're going to put it in this side. So move your divider against the side where the slip pocket is so that the exterior can fit in there. The exterior will be bigger, so the lining is a little bit smaller, so it'll be bigger, so you'll have to squish the exterior in. And the back of the bag will be against the back lining side with the zipper. The zipper pocket, sorry. So you'll really want to squish it in there. Again, that divider is going to be against the slip pocket. For now, I'm going to close my zipper pocket just to make it a little bit easier for pulling. And then I'll unzip it. Make sure the handles are pushed down inside. You want to line up your side seams, so line them up and pin them in place. Again, remember the exterior is bigger 
than the lining, so it's going to be really tight. You're going to really have to maneuver things around. Also make sure your main zipper closure is down so it is out of the way. I'm going to line up those side seams and place a few clips. It's going to be a tight fit but it will work. I'm lining up these center marks too just to make sure everything is lined up. Take your time pinning this just to get everything nice and smooth so you don't have any pleats when you sew this. And don't be afraid to use a lot of clips or pins, whatever you use, to really help hold it in place. There we go, it's all pinned on the top edge. My handles are tucked in and the zipper is tucked in as well. Now I'm going to sew this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm gonna use my extension table to help hold the bag up. So again, sew that top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. There we go, the bag is all stitched together. Now we need to trim this seam allowance so it is half the width of what we just sewed. And now we need to turn the bag right sides out through the opening in the lining. Careful when you're turning it out, don't, don't put, pull, try to push the bag out. If you're finding that the pocket opening is not big enough, you can cut a hole or use your seam ripper to open back up your lining and pull it through your lining. Once you pull it through your lining, you'll then take your lining and pull it out through your zipper pocket and stitch that opening closed and then you'll continue with the instructions. So again, you'll pull it through the lining, so open up your lining with your seam ripper on the stitches you made, pull it out through the lining, once you have it all turned right side out, pull the lining out through the zipper pocket, stitch the lining closed again, and then continue on with finishing the bag. So I'm going to pull my bag out through this opening. Take your time so you don't pull any stitches. So again, if you turned it through the lining in your bag, what you would do is pull that lining through the opening in your zipper pocket, just like this. Pull it all the way through. You'd line it up, pin it all in place. Take your seam, pin it in place, and then you'd stitch that lining closed. Push it back out through the zipper pocket, and then continue on. If you used fabrics that you can press, you can go ahead and press this top edge. I didn't, so I can't press my top edge. However, I'm going to use clips to hold it in place. But because I don't have a free arm in, on my machine, I'm going to turn my bag so that it is lining sides out. There we go. Okay, so I've pinned mine all the way around because I can't press due to the fact that I used vinyl, so I have clips to hold it in place. I've also turned mine so the lining side is out. This is because I don't have a free arm, so I can't really wrap this around anything, so I need to stitch with my presser foot inside my bag on the exterior side of the bag.
Take your time, go slow at this part. Don't rush, you want your top stitching to be as nice as possible. Another thing, check and see how full your bobbin is. If it's not really full, you'll wanna put in a new bobbin. You don't wanna run out of bobbin thread as you're stitching. Another thing you can do is, if you don't like the look of back stitching, don't back stitch, just start stitching. Leave long tails and then you can tie them off and stitch them in with a needle. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that step. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch my bag. So when you get back to where you started stitching, leave long tails. And then we're going to tie them off. So pull them through to the lining, tie a knot, now what I like to do is cut these threads so they're all the same length. Then you'll use a needle. Thread them into the needle. So thread them all together into the needle. And then push the needle back into the fabric. And I like to thread it so that it pushes up towards the seam allowance, just like that. If your threads come out of your needle, just go ahead and re-thread it. Once you have that done, trim it. And you'll have no back stitching at all just nice straight stitching all the way across and that's how you do that you can do that for any bag or pouch that you make where you don't want to have any top stitching now i'm going to turn my bag back so the exterior is out the opening in the zipper pocket Still there so you can use that to get your corners all pushed out nicely reach in through the opening in the zipper pocket and push your corners out push the lining down into the bag remember there is a divider there so you'll have to do it on each side of the divider push the corners of the lining into the corners of the exterior As you can see, this is how it's looking. We are almost done, just a couple more steps to complete the bag. Next, we're going to take our zipper pocket and pull it out. And then, remember how we pressed that edge earlier? We're going to pin that pressed edge together. And then you're going to sew that pressed edge. You can also hand stitch this if you don't want to machine stitch it. I always machine stitch them because it is inside a pocket and once the pocket's filled you're never going to see that. Now I'm going to stitch that closed. Push the zipper pocket back into the zipper pocket opening. Now we are going to install our metal zipper end. First thing you need to do is cut and measure, measure and cut your zipper tape. There are instructions for this on page 33. I'm going to leave my zipper tail long. I do like longer zipper tails, so I'm just going to proceed with the instructions. So you'll fold your zipper. So you fold it so that it goes to the back side of the zipper tape, just like this. So here's my zipper, my right side. I'm going to fold them towards the back of the zipper tape.
and place a clip to help hold it in place, just like that. Then take one of your zipper ends. I like to add a bit of glue to my zipper end into it just to help hold the zipper in place. I'm just using Beacon 3-in-1 for this. That's just in case the little screw falls out at any point. The glue will help hold the zipper end in place. So we push the zipper into the zipper end just like that. Push it all the way in. Then you take the screw and screw this in. Place the zipper end against the table, not on your hand. You don't want to stab a, a screwdriver into your hand if it does slip. So place it against the table and just hold it down and then screw the screw in until you can't tighten it anymore. And there you have it. Your zipper end is attached to your zipper, just like that. Hang on, I'm trying to, there you go. Just like that. It's on the end of your zipper. Again, you can trim this down if you want. You don't have to. The zipper tail, I like mine long, so I left it. And there is your bag, all completed and top stitched with your zipper. If you don't want your zipper tail hanging out, just tuck it down into the lining, just like that. And there is your Felicity tote bag all done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and enjoyed sewing along with me. Don't forget to tag the bag on social media so that we can see all the Felicity totes that you make. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I see them. And if you need to get a hold of the designer, you can email her with any questions you have as well. Again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and sewing along with me and I can't wait to see all your Felicity tote bags that you make. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.